Well, hello, everyone. Super Tuesday is here. I'm Chris Thomas. We've got our phones. We've got our laptops. The numbers are coming in. Yeah, huh? we are ready to reveal those results as they start coming in. I'm Laura Painter. Thank you for joining us. Super Tuesday, just like that. Voters going to the polls in 15 states, including right here in California, the Republican prime presidential primary. Nikki Haley promising to stay in the race through tonight. And here in California, listen to this, we sadly could break the record for the lowest turnout ever in a primary election. Analysts say voters are not excited about a possible Joe Biden and Donald Trump rematch. I read an article yesterday where it said this is one of the finest run campaigns that anybody has ever seen. That's pretty good, right? That's pretty good. It's really a statement. And we have no choice because November 5th, it's right around the corner, November 5th is going to go down as the single most important day in the history of our country. And we're going to make America great again, greater than ever before. So take a look. The results are coming in. And there you see Donald Trump leading with more than 77% of the vote. As a matter of fact, the AP has already called it for Donald Trump here in California. Joe Biden, they've also called 93% so far. And tonight, I have to tell you, we do have two political experts in with us tonight in the studio. Nathan Barankin is former chief of staff to then Senator Kamala Harris. And Tamika Hamilton, a former U.S. Air Force sergeant who challenged Congressman John Garamendi in 2020 and 2022. Welcome to both of you. Thank you so much for being here on this busy primary election night. As these results are starting to come in, give us some of your initial thoughts. Nathan, we'll start with you. Well, it is impressive that Nikki Haley won yet another jurisdiction. D.C., not the, the, the district, was the first one, but she claimed Vermont tonight, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is going to mean something for purposes of her own deliberations about what her next step is. And what we do know is that in these Republican primaries, while Donald Trump is rolling consistently with huge victories, there is a solid segment of the Republican Party that doesn't want to support him. And where they're going to go come November is anyone's guess. Mm -hmm. And Tamika, what kind of signal does that send for the Republican Party? I think that we already know that uh, Donald Trump is going to secure this nomination. And, you know, I think that, you know, we have a lot of time between now and November, so we could possibly see a victory for him. But again, there's a lot of time between now and November. We started off talking about the turnout, right? right. And that perhaps voters were turned off. Right. by the fact that they may be heading toward another rematch between Donald Trump and Joe Biden. What do you think that says with the turnout being the way it is here in California? I mean, you know, these are two candidates that honestly both sides did not want. And these are not the choices that I think that Americans deserve. But here we are. So at the end of the day, uh, you're going to have your true diehard high propensity voters that are going to show up. Um, but there's still a lot of work that needs to be done to get both of them, you know, over the edge for November. And Nathan, I have to ask you, as we look at these turnout numbers, I think the lowest was somewhere around 30, 31 percent. Uh, we could be lower than that. What does that say about how the uh, voters feel about these candidates? Well, I think I agree with Tamika 100 um, percent. These are two leading candidates. Eff effectively, they're both incumbent presidents mm -hmm. for purposes of their own party. And in re-election years in California, for sure, turnout is anemic in those re-election years for Democrats, for Democrats, for sure. But they're also both not terribly popular. Right. So it's hard to get the excitement level up. I think that's likely to change, though, for November. What are some of your concerns for the down-ballot races as the enthusiasm for the presidential races are somewhat lackluster, let's say? Well, one of the things that we know from some of the analysis that has been done of early returns that came in um, uh, prior to Election Day is that the electorate is predominantly older and predominantly white. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what that means and the impact of that is that those are the people who are going to have a disproportionate say on what the voters' choices will be in November. Mm -hmm. Well, and I have to tell you that there are also some local things that are on the ballot, including Prop 1. If we can take a look at some of the results there, there you see, I mean, this is still very early. This is Prop 1 that would give $6 billion to try and tackle 
homeless issues, also mental health issues here in California. The no's are winning, but still very early here. I also think we have the Senate results as well, if we can uh, look at those, because this is another big race, Laura. Yes, mm -hmm. let's talk about that. So we're seeing Adam Schiff here with 34 percent and Steve Garvey, a Republican opponent, at 31 percent. Let's talk with our guests here and branch this out. This is the seat to fill the late Senator Dianne Feinstein. It's on the ballot twice. I wonder if that's a little bit confusing for voters as they're seeing that there. Um, let's toss it over to Tamika. What are some of your thoughts? Do you think that we could get a Democrat Republican uh, race going on here? Uh, well, we have a jungle primary, of course, but could it be the top two out there, Schiff and Garvey? Did yes, it, it was very unexpected. You know, mm -hmm. when I saw that Adam Schiff was uh, you know, doing all that he can to raise uh, Garvey's name ID. I did not think that they were going to be in a dead heat, but here we are. So, you know, anything could happen. Uh, so I do believe that we could possibly have a Republican and Democrat for the first time in a long time. Would that surprise you? It would not, based on how the campaign has been run. I, should, I need to disclose <laughs> I was a tremendous advocate for Barbara Lee uh -huh. um, in this particular race. Mm -hmm. With these early returns, she's not doing very well and we have a long way to go to figure mm -hmm. out what the actual results are going to be in california it's not going to be tonight in this particular right. race it'll be a while to go but yes adam schiff invested heavily yes. in elevating steve garvey and looks like at least based on the early returns he's getting a return on that investment yeah. mm -hmm. okay well while we're talking about this race let's take a closer look at the voting county by county tonight our brandon Ritterman has what's he's following tonight brandon there's a lot of races going on in this primary election. What are you seeing right now? Yeah, so we're just starting to see county results trickle in, even though, as you pointed out, the presidential race has already been called um, for both parties here in California by the Associated Press. They do that on projections, which I won't get into all the machinations of how that works. But I actually want to take a look back real quick because we were talking about the antipathy here. And it's just worth remembering that the last time Joe Biden was on a ballot here in our primary, Bernie Sanders actually walked away with California uh, as a victory for himself. So uh, on the Republican side, uh, oh, whoop, is that, this is, uh, we'll go ahead and take a look at the Democratic results coming in. We actually have quite a bit more counties uh, coming in. Obviously, no surprise here, Joe Biden's the incumbent. We have a quasi incumbent uh, in Donald Trump, uh, and you can see he's uh, off to a very handy lead. So it's, it's not difficult for the Associated Press to make a call. Uh, we have uniform color on the map, and uh, that actually, on the Republican side, I was about to point out, uh, mirrors what we saw in 2016, where Trump handily walked away uh, with California at that stage in the race at that time. We can go ahead and pop over to the Senate race. You'll notice some of the counties uh, were getting staggered results here. Um, but yeah, if we take a look, you can actually see uh, some ideological uh, uh, shift here, which is pretty much going along you know, the, uh, the urban-rural divide, at least according to the map as we see it right now. And then um, we don't yet have any of these trickling in from Prop 1. I'm interested to watch this map throughout the evening as those results come in because I want to see uh, whether we have an urban-rural split uh, on this question. Uh, one of the interesting things about Prop 1 is it's, uh, it's a vote in favor of dedicating a lot more money to the mental health system. It makes some changes to it, but, you know, you could look at this prop in a couple of ways. Is it a referendum on the quality of the mental health care system that we have in California? And are people uh, a little antithetical to wanting to pile more money into a system they might view as broken, for instance? Or are people seeing it as underfunded and wanting to come up with some extra funds for it? So uh, Prop 1 will be interesting to parse. Uh, we've been explaining that to you over the last couple of we uh, weeks. It's a, it's a rather complex question, and it's entirely possible you'll see a lot of undervoting on this question. Uh, people just simply skipping it because they throw up their hands and say, I'm not exactly sure. Um, so I, I'll be watching turnout numbers over the next couple of days pretty carefully as well. Well, when you talk about $6 billion, Brandon, for a prop, I mean, it's a big deal. Mm -hmm. And especially in this case, when you're talking about mental health, of course, though, when you're driving into work every day, going to the grocery store, it's hard to miss some of the mental health challenges that we say, see when it comes to the homeless crisis. Exactly. Millions and billions of dollars have been thrown at this problem. People want to see results. We'll see if Prop 1 is something that people support and vote on. And we're waiting for those results to come in on a, on a, a massive problem. We got the homeless crisis and mental health crisis here in the state. So it's definitely one to watch as lawmakers try to find solutions for it.